Alright, welcome to the show. My name's Tom, but on the forums you know me as Breakdown. Anyways, if you're watching this, chances are you're in one of these. It's a Mazda Speed 3. It's fast, it's fun. You can road race with it with a full load of groceries and people in your back seat and still kick some ass. But it's not without its faults. So we're going to try and fix one of those faults today. And to do that, I brought along someone special. So follow me. How's it going there, my man? Hey, what's going on, Tom? How are you doing, Kevin? Doing good. Good to see you. Thank you. Tell us a bit about yourself. Well, I'm the owner of the MazdaSpeedForms.org. This is my 2007 Mazda Speed 3 with a few bolt ons. A few bolt ons? Just a couple. Nothing top secret? Nothing top secret. Absolutely. So tell us why you come out here all the way today. Well, today we're going to go ahead and install a short throw shifter on a 2008 and a half Mazda Speed 3. It's GW Performance's short throw shifter with a windage shifter. Love that. Let's get to Let's it. Let's go. I'm going to show you how easy this is to install and should give you a good reference point for all those that are doing a hard copy install. So we're going to go have a step one. We're going to go ahead and remove the knob. Real simple. Grab it. Twist it. Counterclockwise. Notice that the stock knob is actually weighted close to about a half pound. We're going to get rid of that. Move on to step two. We're going to go ahead and remove the ashtray. Go ahead and close the lid. And then we're going to start removing the actual console. What I want to do is go ahead and grab on this, pull it up. I want to be kind of gentle with it. Don't kind of manhandle it. It might break some tabs off. Okay, swing it out of the way here. Now it goes. If you get a good close up on this area, you'll see the actual knob. This is actual shift linkage here. And we're going to go ahead and pop these off here in a minute. I just want you guys to get a good picture of what you're going to be dealing with here. It's not that complicated until you get down to the spring area. This is the most troublesome part of the install. I'm going to go ahead and pop off these 8 millimeter bolts right here. Let's break them loose real easy. Zing right through this. Good to have your parts off to the side. This goes real quick. Once we get this out of the way, we'll go ahead and undo your cigarette lighter. I want to twist this out to the right. Just kind of put it off to the side here. Go back to your 8mm. We go inside here. I'm going to do the 8mm bolts, create a new console cubby. Once you get them broken loose, they're real easy to pull out instead of having to manipulate the ratchet. You can go ahead and leave those in there, by the way. They're not going to go anywhere when we lift this out. we got two additional bolts to remove. Again, they're 8mm. They tie the console to the upper console. We'll go ahead and disengage the lower console from the upper console half here. And we're actually going to actually remove this piece out. Once we're ready to do this, we got to make a, an incision cut here so we can disconnect this coupler. Okay, what we just did is we did it when we cut this foam. It keeps this connector engaged with a bunch of other wires. You need to make an incision and cut this out. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to disconnect this connector. Once you get it cut, made this connector which comes from underneath. You guys will see what I'm talking about. A lot of the navigation guys, since this car's not equipped with nav, it's one less step to deal with. Now we're gonna go ahead and need your help here Tom. Okay. You need to hold this. Go ahead and disengage. Let's go ahead and fling it around here. And you guys want to be careful not scratch up you guys this new piano finish. Up and out of the way. Watch out for the mirror. There you go. And that's out. This is the stock shifter. Actual percentage array is unknown, but you can almost guarantee it's probably less than 2% reduction. We're going to go to 30% reduction. The first thing you're going to notice about the TWM performance shifter, this is actually going to be 1.75 inches lower than where we're at right now. 
So as you can see, our hand sits pretty high. We're going to be sitting much lower now. Okay, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to use a large screwdriver, preferably a flathead, and we're going to wedge it in between this base piece here, and we're going to pop off this shifter bushing here. And you want to kind of get in there. It does help if you've got a second driver and it keeps it from walking on you. Simple as pie. Okay, now we got the first side off, let's get the second one. We're going to go the opposite direction. Use this piece as your leverage. Keep it from walking. So I'll put this in gear. There we go. Both of them are now disengaged. See this? We're almost done. We've got to move the T20 Torx next. So I'll take your T20 Torx on the quarter inch bit. Grab it in there. We're going to do the screw. We're going to remove the ring. The ring comes right out of here. Save it. We're going to need it for later. We'll go ahead and remove the rest of these bushing. Move the 10 millimeter bolt from the assembly. Pull it out. And this guy right here is a little difficult to use. It helps if you have a wobble, a wobble end on the end of your extension. As you can see, I can move this around. It makes maneuvering these tight areas a little better. Hopefully, break it loose. from the bottom and pull it out. You see now you can move this around fairly easy. So what we're going to need to do is take your flathead and you actually have to pry these old stock bushings out of the shifter base. You can manhandle these a little bit. You want that. I'm not going to do much damage to them. The stock ones are aluminum. Now, now at this point, we got to actually remove these rubber bushings. This assembly force them out from the bottom. I'm also going to rotate this a little bit. Pinch them from the inside. Pull them out. Keep them on the side. There you go. Now you got the rubber bushings out. We're off to the next step. Okay, here's the stock bushing that we removed. As you can see, it's real spongy. This is what causes the shifter to kind of going around when you're really grabbing it hard, wide open throttle, which is also one of the causes for the famous third gear grind. You're going to replace them with solid aluminum bushing. Much shorter, but more sturdier. You're not going to have the movement. If you looked at the instructions, you'll see that these were black. It almost made it look like, hmm, did they cut the rubber off? So it pays to kind of Take a time out, read the directions a little bit, instead of just hacking on it and doing the wrong step. So, anyhow, this is what we're replacing. He's got to go. Hey kids, now it's time for me to talk a little bit. All right, so what we've done is we pulled the rubber bushings out, as Kevin explained earlier, and we've managed to insert the new TWM metal bushings. Now, this is really important. You do need a friend to help you with it, because otherwise it's going to be really frustrating. And what we did is, come on down here. You'll place the metal bushings on the flat piece of the metal right here. And then what you're going to do is you're going to compress the entire shifter assembly on top of these metal bushings. Now the metal bushings have a raised part that will slide in to this plastic piece, but it does take some nudging. So that's where your friend comes into play. Eventually, when it's seated properly, come in and get a close-up on this. 
When it's seated properly, it's gonna look like this. It's gonna fit cleanly and flushly. So here we are dropping the washers onto the metal bushings that we've seated. Now, once again, you do need a friend to help you with this. It is kind of a pain in the ass on your own because there's no sink hole for these bushings to fit into. So they're just gonna slide around on the metal if you don't have someone to help you out. But anyways, you're gonna compress the plastic and the bushing will seat and you can see it right here. Then you take the washer, drop it on top of the bushing, center it up, and then you're gonna drop your screw in. That's where I lose you guys because that hand's right in the way. All right, so free that hand there up. You go. Yeah, there you go. And then you're gonna drive the screw in. In business. We've dropped the bushings in. Once you get the screws in, all you gotta do is tighten them up and then we're gonna move on to the next step. Okay. Included with the kit, you get four paper clips in case you mess one up. What you need to do is fold it. As you can see, this one broke right away. No wonder why they give you four. Let's try this again. We'll be a little more gentle. There you go. As you can see, we're going to use the fat side here to keep our tabs up. We'll go through that here in a minute. Okay, you want to take a flat blade screwdriver here. And there's this area right here that we need to sort of dig and push forward. And while we're doing that, once you got to push forward, we're actually going to take the paper clip, stick it behind. This is one of three clips that we're going to have to dig forward and lock with the paper clip. So get off to the side of it. Be careful not to break it. It's real easy to break these clips, but take a little practice to get a good grip on this. Once you do, once you get it forward enough, you just stick it in there like that. It's enough to hold that clip from locking in. Second clip is this guy right here. Again, and dig it from the side. Get your paper clip ready because you don't really get many opportunities for Sliding that behind there. Alright, so what are we doing here, Kevin? Well, now we got the lovely breakage of the paper clips installed. You can see them right here, right here, and right here. That's going to undo the assembly once we yank the tension off the spring right here. So, what do I got to do, bud? Okay, we're gonna go ahead and take a needle nose plier. I'm gonna lift the tension off the spring. Okay. Give you the sign and you're gonna pull it straight up. And then we'll yank it right out of the hole here. Okay. Do I need to worry about these guys? Uh, you can just move them out of the way. Go ahead. Yeah. Yank it, yank it, yank it, yank it, yank it, yank it, yank it. Come on, use your hand. Be a man. Yep. Did it lock back in there? No, it's, it's all right. It's, it's out. The ball's out. There you go, dog. Right, there you go. This is the nastiest son of a bitch on the planet. <laughs> right here. It is. Alright. That's why you need two people for this one, folks. Alright, so once you pull the shifter out, you're gonna have to reclaim this cup and this O-ring. Now, some of the kits might actually come with an O-ring. If you are one of those people that has one, you're lucky. So, boom, cup comes off and we'll put this aside and pull the O-ring later. Okay, we're going to go ahead 